Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. If you watched the previous video, you'll know that my USB charger, USB-C, the high powered one, is packed in. I was going to use this on a soldering iron because the power supply that was provided with these wasn't high enough power to actually run it properly. And it just sort of made a bit of a funny noise. The soldering iron didn't come on, but the soldering iron is still working fine on its original power supply. And I've tried this on the device it came with and it doesn't give any power anymore. So I thought we may as well have a look at a USB C power supply, see if we can actually fix it, yeah. See if we can figure out what's going wrong with this. I think this piece actually comes off. This is like probably different adapters you can put on here for EU or UK or USA or all of any other sorts, but those are the only three. So you know, I don't actually know that. Or are there any other sorts? And I've traveled around a fair bit in Asia and Europe and over to Mexico, yeah. Somebody's gonna answer that. <laughs> well, while you're thinking about that, I'm gonna think about how to get inside this. So I think this does come off, but I don't know if I need to take this off to actually get inside it. It looks like it's kind of sealed around here to me. And again, maybe around there, but this just looks like a, a kind of molding and this it looks to me like a gap. Could be wrong. Let's see if I can get in here at all. I'm not sure a plastic spudger will help. No, no. I think I may have to use the old trick, which is to get a screwdriver on the corner and hit it with a hammer. That seems to be one way to get into these things. I know there is supposedly another technique of squeezing it in a vise, but I've never got anywhere with that. Uh, at the end of the day, if I don't open it up, it's going in the bin. So let's see if we can get inside it this way. This will be noisy. I may try to uh, remove the sound slightly for you guys. I may go to the van and get a hammer. But at the I'm going to hit it with this uh, adjustable wrench thing. Misuse the tools a bit and let's see if I can get into it. No, nope, nothing happening at all. There's also the technique of using the Dremel, of course. Does this thing actually clip off? Mm. Yes, that does clip off, but it doesn't really help us to get into it. Yeah. Okay. They obviously didn't want anybody to get inside this. But I am inside this. Okay. Without much damage, actually. Just put a little hole in there, but we now have it open. Okay. So here's our power supply. You can see where, ow! And I got a good zap off it. Yeah. What do we know about uh, discharging capacitors? This hasn't been pulled in for like at least 30 minutes. Yeah, that surprised me. Yeah, it just went across one finger. I mean, it didn't do any harm, but that surprised me a little bit. I better make sure there's no more voltage in it, yeah. That also tells me the power supply isn't starting, by the way, the fact it was holding the charge like so. Capacitor, I guess, is here. This is where it kind of stung me. And there's 153 volts in it. Okay, and that's after I've been zapped by it. The safe way to discharge this is to use something like this. So this is a 3.3K resistor. 5 watt I think or something like that so if we hold this across the two high voltage terminals it will discharge no sparks no drama just keep it on there for a little while and then test again 
not with your finger. Yeah, test it with a voltmeter. They'll both tell you whether there's any voltage in there, but the voltmeter is a less painful method. Okay. Try it again. And we have about 1.5 volts in there now. You'll notice, you've probably seen this before, that when you discharge a capacitor and take the resistance off, we can see how it recovers, like it kind of like somehow finds some volts from somewhere and fills back up. Maybe because somebody can actually explain that to me. I've never thought about it before. Why did they do that? Yeah, look how the voltage is going up. Yeah. Why do they do that we'll get into it that bit of voltage yeah and some more is coming back yeah <laughs> it won't go up to a high voltage by itself by the way I'm not sure where it would stop it might be interesting to see where it does stop I'm sure I could go and Google why that happens, actually, but it's much more fun listening to you guys. Why does it do that? What's the method by which that happens? In the meantime, because there's basically no voltage left in this, I'm actually going to short it out with the screwdriver. Okay. Get rid of that. See if it's gone now. yeah so what did my finger tell me well it told me that even after half an hour these things can hold quite a high charge and it also told me the power supply isn't running at all so there's nothing to form a current path to discharge the capacitor yeah this appears to be kind of like soldered down there I'm not sure I actually need to take it off it might be a good idea though so looks like there's a couple soldered connections down there which go into that ah oh, it's actually clipped on <laughs> okay it like kind of like yeah pushes in there yeah see clip oh, that's interesting isn't it? it's just like it clips on okay so that's the little beast that actually got me I did it and I'll show you again on video so that you don't have to do it, okay? Learn the lesson and learn it quick. So what do we have then? Well, we know the AC is coming in here. This looks like a, what is it, capacitor? No. Uh, oh, it's a fuse. I can see it. So it says... 3.15 amp that's a fuse this thing then will be a negative temperature coefficient thermistor so this will start off like a, maybe a tens of ohms to stop the inrush current or at least to, not to stop it but to limit the inrush current and then it will just drop down as it warms up to practically zero ohms that looks like a filter coil filter capacitor it looks like probably two filter coils and that will come to the bridge rectifier. Which is probably where these pins are by the looks of it. Yeah, it looks like that. And that bridge rectifier is kind of hidden in that lot, okay? Um, we have another fuse? Maybe a, a well, transistor or something in there. Okay. Well, this is probably a high value resistor or high wattage resistor. Well, it reads like a fuse. That's like another fuse. Where's that go to? Well, it comes down here. So 
have a look where we can start. But we can see basically what we've got. So from this end, we know we go through a fuse here to here to a NTC thermistor to here. And we're reading a slight resistance now. Remember, I'm on diode mode through a filter, I think we had, which is here. And then up to another one, this is where the capacitor went across. To another filter coil, and then this brings us down to one of these pins here. So this is almost certainly the bridge rectifier, this is the AC input. If that's the AC input, then the chances are the other AC input is next to it on the middle pins. Yep, that's the other AC input, that's the two inputs. Then these will probably be the outputs, which is a positive. Well, we can easily check that. So if we put the red meter lead to one of the AC, either doesn't matter. We'll get a connection to one end, which we do have, but not the other end. So the red to the AC, where we get the diode going to is the positive, and this will do the same. Okay? And then if we switch around to this end, red won't do anything. But if we put the black in the middle, we should get a diode. There to there. Hmm. No. Try them again, just be right. Oh, me to stop working. Yeah. Red to the AC both go to this end. And black to the AC should both go to the other end. Black to AC. Yep. Yep. So this is the negative end, this is the positive end. And we can now trace that through to the capacitor, which we know full well had some voltage in it as I discovered very quickly. Okay, so that brings us around here. The capacitor is here. Yeah, that's the negative end of the capacitor. And here, other end, is the positive end of the capacitor here. Oh, it reads through like a... I've had a sort of dodgy lead, let me just push the leads in. There shouldn't be anything there. Yeah. So this is the positive end of the capacitor, and this is the negative end of the capacitor. That's our DC, 320 volts roughly. Yeah. So, I can see a chip here. This, where there's a pin missing, the one the other side of the gap, and that pin is deliberately missing, will be the high voltage pin, okay? You can also see this kind of a gap which runs through here. This is the opto isolator. This will be, well, it's just a little bit of plastic actually. But this will be the transformer somewhere. Yeah, transformer's there actually. Yes, yeah, so the transformer's here. And this will be the output from the transformer. Okay. So this is the high voltage side and this chip is on the high voltage side. And that I would say is the one that's driving the transformer. Now. It's either doing it directly or it's going to do it from whatever's here. Yeah. And we can see from here there's some tracks that kind of come back in this way. Let's have a quick look. So this would be the high voltage pin on the chip. And if it's driving the transformer directly, that will connect to one of the windings. Okay. Not directly there. No. 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 So it doesn't look like it's directly driving the transformer. That makes me think this MOSFET must be. If it's bolted the way I think it is, this will be the gate. Well, it does read the resistance to there. One end will go to the, yeah. One end goes to the negative end of the capacitor, and the middle pin will probably read to here via a coil. Yeah. 
Yeah, there, there's the coil. Okay. So that effectively is driving the transformer coil. So we have a couple of possibilities here now. Either this is failed, so it's just open circuit, or this chip isn't driving it, it never switches it on, so this isn't starting. So really now we need to see if we can find out there's a report number on this chip. Let's at the microscope. Okay, here's the chip. There's either something on it or they've removed the markings from it. I'm not sure if we can get that off. It's a bit of ISO. No, it's obviously not removing it. I probably ought to try and find something like acetone. Nail varnish remover. Let's see if I can actually see anything on this chip at all. Oh yes, we can see something on this chip. Just wants a bit of a scrub. Okay, let's go again. I think we can see enough to figure out what this actually is. Looks like 3108L with a funny little symbol by it. Yeah. We can see the markings quite clearly. 3108L, the little red dot is pin 1. Just looking around this, this must have a method to start up. And this is, if you've watched my other videos on power supplies, we can sort of kind of figure some of this out. So we've got a diode here next to it. Yeah. This diode most likely will be part of the circuit that powers this up. So effectively, there'll be a high value resistor normally that starts this. And then once you get started, the power supply comes back via the transformer on another secondary not the one that drives the main output and that'll via the diode will power this up permanently if you like we can have a quick look while we're here so the diode should read okay well it doesn't read okay in that direction how about the other direction yeah that reads Good. And then I think you can see that end of the diode probably comes to the chip. Yeah, there. So that'll be the VCC pin, if you like. It'll also go to one of these capacitors, which probably charges up to hold a voltage. Now, how does it start? Well, usually there's some high value resistors somewhere. That one's 100k, so that's 100 plus three zeros, but that's probably not high enough. I'd expect it to be higher than that. Maybe a number of them in series. Those are 200k, a couple of them. So there could be some high value resistors here. If we can find them, it's worth checking them. Probably the only ones I can actually see are the ones I've just looked at. I mean, there could be something on the other side. This is the high voltage side of the board, so you're going to be on the air somewhere if they're here, okay? So the only high value resistors I can really see are these a couple of 200k, that could be 400k in series, that might be worth checking. These could be part of the startup. Well, Unless I've got a bad connection, that one reads open. I have a bad connection. It's still reading... Oh, 100k. Okay. What about this one? about the same these will be wider in series if they were I think they are they certainly are wider in series so this is one end this is the other end we'll read the total resistance no they're actually wired in parallel so they that's why I'm reading 100k they're wired in parallel 
that may not be the startup this one here which is 100k It's 100k. I don't see any other high value resistors, but it's quite possible that the effectively start up high value resistor is inside the chip. Sometimes it is. Let's well, see if we can find the data sheet for that. So it's 3108L. I decided to post a request on badcaps.net forum to see if anybody knew what this chip actually is and had a data sheet. And uh, I got a reply, so I now have the data sheet I can show you. And then we can figure out what this chip is doing and we can hopefully work out what's wrong with this power supply. And this is badcaps.net forum. This is probably the largest repair forum on the internet. You can see there are sections for various types of repair. And it's also very active. You can see there are a lot of people viewing here, even though it's around 1.30 in the afternoon UK time. So it's about 8.30 in the morning uh, New York and about 5 in the morning over in California and whatever time in your bit of the world. So it's not a busy time in the world at the moment. The Americans are not really online, but there's lots of people on. So it's a very, very popular place. And as I say, it's very friendly and it's free. So come over and join guys. I posted my question in the power supply repair section over the weekend and I have an answer. So this is my question. I'm asking for the data sheet. Just show you the photo of the actual uh, board. You can see there, guys, what I'm looking for. And somebody actually gives me the answer. So this is the actual data sheet that I requested. We can see a picture of the chip here. This is the one with the missing pin that I mentioned. So this is the high voltage pin, which I have already described why we have that. So that's the high voltage pin. And VCC is on pin four, where I basically determined it was already. Here's a typical application circuit and the pin description. So we can see HV pin nine, high voltage input, and also sense line voltage. So this is effectively sensing the mains voltage, and it provides the startup current to VCC. VCC is the power to the chip. It actually stands for voltage to the collectors, if you wondered what VCC stands for, meaning basically the positive supply in a transistor circuit. So VCC is on pin seven, and we also have VCC in on pin four. This says it's a wide range input supply voltage to produce VCC. So if you look at the circuit, this is VCC. We have a capacitor here. So this capacitor charges up and that is the voltage that powers the chip. VCC itself comes from two places. One is HV on pin nine. And you'll see here we have two diodes from the AC input via two resistors coming into HV. That is how the high voltage gets on the pin. So if we measure on pin nine, we should see quite a high voltage. Internally on that chip, that creates VCC through a little regulator in here, and that charges the capacitor up. When this capacitor gets to a high enough voltage, let's say for example, 15 volts, I don't know what it is. Let's say it's 15 volts. This then turns on and starts to drive the MOSFET, which pulls current down through the winding of the transformer through the current sense resistors to the ground, and that starts the power supply running. Once it's running, we have two secondaries, this one and this one. This one just generates the power supply output, the USB-C output, and this secondary through this diode charges this capacitor, and this basically is the VCC in, which comes to this chip, and that itself again provides VCC. So the idea is that this input provides the power to keep the ship running. It continues to charge this capacitor. If for some reason this circuit doesn't fire up, for example, a problem with the MOSFET, a problem with the diode, a short circuit on the output, dragging the power down, 
this diode can't charge this capacitor so this vcc in doesn't receive a supply or it receives a very low voltage supply and the way this works is that these resistors or this resistor can provide enough current to charge this capacitor to get it started but once it's running this chip starts to drain the capacitor and it pulls power out of the capacitor faster than this resistor can put power into the capacitor so the voltage here drops and normally they're designed for example if they drop down to 12 volts or 9 volts it then switches off if everything goes okay and this fires up this diode via vcc in provides enough power to keep this capacitor charged and it keeps running that's how it's supposed to work so the first thing we really need to check is do we have a voltage on hv pin 9 do we have a voltage on vcc which is generated from the chip and afterwards maybe do we have anything on vcc in so that's pin 9 and pin 7 and possibly pin 4 let's have a look because there is a lot of high voltages in this circuit i need to attach some wires this is the ac coming in i'm actually going to use this which i wired up so this is a iec power connector and i can literally clip the crocodile clips on here so that is my power coming in for safety reasons i'm going to power this up via the light bulb so if these accidentally shorted the worst thing that would happen is the light bulb would come on but obviously there's high voltage on all this side of the circuit you can see the gap here so this is the low voltage side this is the high voltage side and all the measurements we make here are going to be relative to hot ground hot ground is the negative end of this large capacitor so this is where i'm going to put my black metal lead it's safest when you're working on things like this to only use one hand effectively keep the other one behind your back or just out of the way yeah then if you do get a shock it's not going to sort of flow down your arm across your chest and up into the other arm yeah that's the dangerous thing so to make that easier to do i'm actually going to solder a wire onto here where the negative end of the capacitor goes a little bit of wire and clip my negative metal lead to that and then i can just use one hand just to probe where i like because the pin there is missing between pins eight and nine it's fairly easy to measure on nine but it's not easy to measure on seven which is in there so i think i will also tag a bit of wire on there then i can actually clip my multimeter on if i want and keep myself well away from the high voltage and make it very unlikely i'm going to short anything pin nine is not so bad because that's on its own in that case i'll just i'm just going to measure that first if I find I've got a high voltage there, I need to measure pin set. So here's just a little bit of wire. I have hot ground there, I've put a little bit of flux on it. So first of all, I'm just going to tag my wire on there. That's where my black meter probe is going to go. And then as I mentioned, measuring on pin 9 is not difficult because of the gap. So that's fairly easy to get to. Measuring on pin 7 is difficult. So we have 5, 6, 7, which is in here. So what I'll do is actually, I'm just going to see if I can find where that actually connects to. I don't have any power plugged in by the way at the moment, just before anybody notices. I'm going to just find the point that actually goes to here. Somewhere I can easily probe. I will do so. So that's pin seven. Well, you think it goes to here this one the connection noise yeah that's pin seven so I, again i can relatively easily probe on there and i can relatively easily probe on here okay so that's how we'll do it okay i have a crocodile clip lead so negative this goes to the black metal lead onto this black wire I've just soldered on. So that's out of my way where I'm not going to come into contact with it. Okay. And there we go. We can now power this up. 
So just before we do, this point would be the high voltage coming in, about 320 volts DC I would imagine, the one that gives you a zap if you don't realise it's still charged 40 minutes after you switch it off, and this will be the pin 9. Okay, let's try it. Well the light bulb flicked on, so I know there's power gone in, yeah? So we can have loop, so this is 320 volts. What's on pin 9? 200 volts, so that has got high power on it, okay? What's on the VCC? That's here. 20 volts, okay. This chip has power. I've switched it off for the moment. What's happening to the high voltage? It's actually discharging now. Has this thing started to work for some reason? Because that is discharging. The fact that is discharging is telling me, A, that it wouldn't give me a zap half an hour later, and B, that this seems to have started working, otherwise that wouldn't be discharging, yeah? Let's connect something to the output of it. This charger actually belongs to a little mini hot plate that I have, so I'm going to connect that. I'm not going to be bitten twice by this thing, so I'm just going to make sure there is no voltage in the capacitor anymore. Oh, interesting. So we kind of like, it is switched off at the mains, but it's like it kind of like recovers to a bit of voltage when uh, it finishes discharging, like when the actual thing stops running. I think this is running. Okay. Let's connect to the thing so I will just uh, make sure that I am actually on the low voltage side of it which is this side of it I'm wary of this thing now okay we plugged in I'll switch the light bulb current limiter off just to make sure these things are not going to short each other okay let's see if this thing lights up Yeah, it's working. The little lights on it, yeah, it's working. I've just switched it off again. Oh, that's interesting. So, it would seem to me that whatever was wrong with this is just like a bad connection somewhere. I mean, voltage got in it. You guys know that you saw the first part of this video and it stayed in it. Yeah, that's what I was doing, just draining away again. It's not draining his way so fast now as I actually have a load on it. Okay, so it's a bit of a mystery. I've reconnected the soldering iron I wanted to test with it, which is when this thing effectively packed in. Again, I've got it now directly onto mains input without the current limiter. Let's see what it does. It's powered it up okay now, so... This has something of a mystery. I really don't understand what the problem was. It is switched off. That eventually will, yeah, go off. And we'll just have to wait for the capacitor to discharge. We'll put this back together. I will just give it a quick clean with isopropyl, the PCB, in case there was some dust or I don't really know what would cause it to do that. Yeah, and then we'll see that we have a bit of spare time on this video. Let's have a play with a soldering iron with a better power supply than it came with. I'm just putting it back together. I tried it and it's not working. And it looks like I have a bad connection down here on the mains coming in. But that doesn't answer all the questions. If we look from here, uh, from here to this input, we have good continuity. Okay. And from this one to here, we don't. Okay. Should we do resistance? No, it doesn't read the resistance. It's like it's open circuit. So if that's what was wrong with it initially, that doesn't explain at all how the capacitor got a high voltage charge into it. Yeah. Look, we go from here, put it back onto continuity. We have continuity. And we go from here. 
and we have continuity and if we look at this yeah this is the thing so these are the two spring eclipse we can go from one of the AC yeah continuity other one continuity so it's like this isn't making a contact on that which I thought was a bit of a daft idea when I first saw it to be quite honest but just bend that a little bit mm. I've tried putting a little bob of solder on already didn't seem to help okay just get the clip in one did clip right okay so it's clipped in it's actually clipped into there yeah have we got continuity that one yes this one no i'll try and zoom in on that for you but it looks like it's making a connection obviously it isn't making a connection uh, Try put a slightly bigger blob of solder on this one. Okay. So wait for that to cool down a moment. Solidify. So yeah, I've basically just put a bigger blob on that one. See whether or not that will actually make a contact. If I can still even plug it in, let's have a go. Yeah, it's clipped in place. You probably had to go quick. See if we've got one now. Yes. No. How bizarre. Definitely nothing there. No. I have continuity down to the blob of solder and I have continuity to the connector I don't know if you can probably see where I am let me show you so from here right, get onto it well actually I don't need to go there I can go up here onto the onto the uh, AC and put on the bridge rectifier I can connect to here so this is the bridge rectifier okay the two inputs one goes there one goes here okay and this one goes to the springy clip okay and this one Yeah, it goes down there, all right. It's as though this clip isn't somehow making a connection. I'm thinking that it's a really stupid design, this thing. <laughs> that one's fine. And this one isn't. Yeah, he's definitely pushing on the clip. I mean, there's no doubt he's pushing on the clip. Yeah. Take a little bit of solder back off his. Yeah, basically the PCB kind of like traps between this edge of this plastic and the metal clips that's what actually makes the connection
I just can't get a connection to there. It's ridiculous, guys. That is ridiculous. How could I not have a connection to there? Really? I mean, how can I not have? No, yeah, how can I not have? But I don't have. Oh, stupid thing. Okay, I've taken off the old lead free solder, whatever it was, mixed with leaded. I've put some more on. I've actually made it a little bit narrower. Just to see whether that actually helps. Okay, it's a bit thinner now. Do I have a connection? No, that's probably too loose actually. That that's that's not gripping at all. Okay. A bit more. Okay. Don't have a reliable connection. Okay, top one's working now. But this just fell back out again. Okay, a bit more on that one. Okay. Huh. Now I can't get the other one. Yeah, I've got the opposite one to connect. Do we need any reading across this? We probably don't actually. So I can't easily tell when I have a connection when I put it back together. Oh, we do. Okay. So we can read the reading across it. Yeah. Let's put the lid on. Okay. That reading I'm seeing isn't inside this end, is it? No, it's definitely across here. Okay. Let's try that. Try that. No, it's open. Still don't have it. What a ridiculous thing. I think I'm going to end up solving bits of wire onto here and onto there. And I just can't figure out how to get this to give any reliable sort of contact. Can we even do it? Does this thing lift out? No, not easily. Let's try it. Let's try it. So we actually get a bit of solder onto these. Yeah, I've got it to ten. So we can attach bits of wire on this. Okay. We find something I can use. Okay. I'll just try and solder onto the top so the PCB still fits in place. I mean, maybe actually putting your solder on here may have actually made it work, make a contact. I'm sure this will definitely work. Unless there's some unforeseen uh, result. Let's go this way around. Okay. Green water here. I'm going to solder this further up the board. I'm not going to solder this on the end where it goes in. 
this one can go over here Okay, I probably actually don't need them this long either, actually. Yeah, I'll keep them shorter so they stay on the high voltage side of the PCB. Just for safety, I'm going to put them quite a lot shorter. Yeah, like that. So they basically, when I push this in, these can't end up on this side of the big divide, yeah? We need to make sure they stay on this side of the PCB. Just for safety, guys. Okay, so this one goes here. Okay, the other one has to go to... In fact, I'm just going to move this one slightly. The other one needs to go here, which is this side of the fuse. Okay, put this one on first. Okay. And then this one can sort of go around like that. On there. Okay. Now let's check it. AC in. Nothing. That one goes there. No, the problem's in here. After all that, the problem's in here. Okay. Have a look. So this PC comes off. We just have two tags here. No. Yes. No. What's going on underneath here? What's well, attached to that? This doesn't easily come out of here. Not that I think I can see. No. So, so I've got, I've got a contact to here, but I haven't got a contact. To this, okay. And this side is good. This side, oh, it's this thing. Yeah, it's this thing, you see how you like? Yeah, I've got a connection now, but it's not very good. See if it works that with a better wire. Okay. Have a look.
Yes. Yes. No. So the problem's in this, guys. This is where the problem is with it. Um, I'll now try to take this off because it's obviously broken anyway. No. No. Is it like a, there's a bit of plastic tape on? Ah, oh, okay. Now we get somewhere a bit further. Now we get somewhere a bit further. Okay. So, this thing has like a little metal end, and that kind of like makes contact into this thing. Okay, let's try cleaning it. I'll get a bit of ISO, and I'll get a bit of contact cleaner as well afterwards. A bit of ISO in here. Otherwise, I think I could effectively wire and plug it in through here and get it to work. Okay. Okay. Let that dry out a little bit. And then we'll try it. Well, that'll go a bit more positive now. Have we got a connection? Yeah. Let's try that. Let's put it flat first. Let's try it again. No. That one's okay. This one's not okay. Oh, how frustrating. It's like this thing's supposed to make a contact to it. That's what I can think. Just looking at this now, I think actually I can see where this has been arcing here, this one. This is the one that's not making the contacts. And no matter how much I try, I've tried cleaning it. Try bending these things, but it just doesn't want to actually make a contact to it. I wonder if I can just effectively take this metal clip off and solder the wires from there to the PCB, like I was doing before. Screw this back in place so it acts as an insulation. Maybe do it that way. Uh, be interesting to see if I can get any solder on these without melting the plastic. But I think by now we've done some fairly drastic measures. Okay. The flux. Bit of solder. Will it tin? I think I have tinned it, you know. I think I actually have. Yeah, that looks like I have. Let's see what we can do. So, get with that little solder ball. I wonder actually if now I've done that, if it makes a contact, if you see what I mean. Let's have a go. So, put this on here. Okay, let's try this. Good. 
Yeah, I think at last I might have it, guys. Took a bit of thinking about that. I oh, know you were shouting at the screen, but it took me a bit of thinking about it. Uh, and that's what this channel's about. It's real, guys. It's real, yeah. I could have just done that and said, come back on and say, oh, look, all we need to do is this, yeah. Let's see now. We should have a good connection. Do we have? No, now we don't have connections onto either of them. Okay. I think maybe me putting solder on these now has kind of messed it up a little bit. Uh, that's good. That one isn't good. Okay. Try a bit of braid. <laughs> this is like an epic, guys. This is an epic. Bit more of that one. Okay. That's got it. And do we may do we read across these? Go to resistance range. Yes, we do. Let's put the lid on. Okay, try again. Yes, we do. Let's try that. I'll put a bit of insulation tape on just for the moment to hold it. If it works, I'll put a little bit of glue in it. Okay, but for now that will keep it together. Once again, do we have a connection? Yes. Let's plug it into the little hot plate. Okay. See if it works. Power on. Yes. Wet up. Okay, guys, so that's now uh, fixed <laughs> after some effort. Just before I do use this, I'm just going to put the little plastic thing back on that I uh, took off where those screws are. I mean, those screws obviously connected direct to the AC, so the little plastic thing was some sort of protective insulator, so we should fit that. I will just make sure i do not get zapped by this thing again so i'm just on the low voltage side of it yeah so these little screws here i'd like a little cover on them this little thing so we need to just put this back on try and get it centered on there yeah so that's just effectively to cover those over although i don't really see what they could touch in here but that's how it was just go again with this and we'll check to see if we have a connection. Okay, put it on. Do we still have a good connection? Yeah, yes, we do have something there. Yeah, so we also know it's fairly reliable now. The PCB slides into this little groove here. So just need to line that up. There we go. And the last check. Yes. Okay, I'll try this for a couple of days. If it's working reliably, I will put Arrow Diet in here and uh, take this tape back off it. So that's the end of the repair video, guys. But I may as well, while I have this in my hand, have a quick look at that 60 watt 
soldering item we were playing with on the review the other day where we didn't have a suitable power supply. The one that came with it was only 18 watt. Here's the soldering iron. I don't have a bit in at the moment. I'm just going to make sure it powers up. Okay. Yes, power supply is definitely working now. Right, I'll fit a tip into this and now let's try it. Okay, so we're ready to go. I have the uh, soldering iron set at uh, 380, the same as we were playing with these before. I'll just move the light slightly so we can see the board well. I want to try something as well this time. So this is something that one of the subscribers was saying, Mr. Guru, that it's easy to unsolder a low value or a zero ohms resistor from one end, but difficult with a high value resistor. And I didn't actually realize that. I've never known that. So let's try it. So we have some 47 ohm resistors here. I think we can class these as low value. So let's see what happens. I'll switch the soldering iron on and we'll try. So we'll put wedded solder on both ends. Here we go, this is one end. Okay, we'll do the same on the other end. Okay, and now let's try to desolder it from one end. And yes, it does desolder from one end. We can do the next one. I'm sure it will do exactly the same, so and come in there. But I've noticed I've bent the tip a little bit more actually. That was a bit of an accident, but there you go. Okay, so those unsolder easily from one end, yeah. Let's get my tweezers to take that off there. Okay, let's try that on a high value resistor. I know there are some on this board. I did spot some earlier. So let's see. Yeah, this one here, 684. I am assuming that is a 680k resistor. So let's have a go at it. That's here. Yeah, this one. Once again, some forks. Just clean the ends of the tip. Plenty of forks there. Just make sure you get some on both ends of it. Okay. I was doing that left handy, by the way. Okay, so. Let's try it. So we're coming from one end again. And we'll turn it and we'll come in from the other end. Okay, now can we unsold it from one end? Yes. And that made no difference as far as I can see. Uh, so I wasn't able to demonstrate that, uh, Mr. Guru. I don't know uh, if I misunderstood what you meant, but that appeared to work exactly the same. Also, this soldering iron now it has a higher powered power supply seems to be working rather a lot better. Let's have a go at some of these capacitors. These are probably the largest ones on the board. Flux. Okay. Leaded solder. I did solder. Now I've noticed you can't do these from one end. Well, I wasn't able to with the other iron. Let's try it from both ends, which how I would normally desolder one of these. Okay. Yeah, that came off relatively easily. I didn't have a good contact on it at first. We'll do another one. Use the tweezers this time to get out of the way. Okay. Let's have a go at the next one. Okay. Again, the leaded solder. Leaded solder. This time I'll keep the tweezers to hand and we'll come in from both sides. Yeah, got it. Obviously some fairly heavy ground plays in this area. 
But for those of you who are interested to see how this worked on my power supply, now you can see it better. This power supply is actually only 45 watt, I believe. We'll check in a minute. I do have a 100 watt power supply coming. I've ordered one from AliExpress. So we can also have a play with that. And as I was asked on the comments to the last Soldier 9 review, I will get some demonstration boards made up and we will try to test all these Soldier 9s again with a more of a direct comparison but just as a last thing on this i want to try something now which is can we unsolder small capacitors from one end i've never particularly tried it i will use this technique of heating both ends but let's have a look okay will this actually unsolder from one end yes that's interesting interesting okay Okay, yes, easily. I hope you enjoyed that repair, guys. That was interesting. Sometimes it's the most simple thing, but I honestly can't explain to myself how I ended up with a high voltage in the capacitor. The power supply obviously had power getting into it, but didn't start. And then once I connected the wires directly to it, it did start. I hadn't tried it that way previously. So, yeah comments below guys what was going on there but you know what we fixed it and i guess that's what it's all about so all i can say really is that i will see you all soon on another weird electronics repair video ciao for now guys